Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be running a chloride test. Uh, chloride uh, is not to be confused with chlorine. Uh, we're really looking at the dissolved salt in this test. Uh, we're going to be using a test kit today from Taylor Technologies. Uh, the nice thing about Taylor Technologies is they color code their test kits. Uh, so for this test, it's going to be the orange test paper, the orange vial, and uh, the orange cap things. You'll notice that there is a green one in there. Don't be alarmed. It's the phenolphthalein indicator, and that's used for multiple tests. And we're going to start with uh, the sample size. There's multiple options for this. Uh, kind of knowing where your water is going to start uh, is, is the best place to guess what amount you want per drop. But I'm going to choose that one drop is equal to 10 ppm. So with that, I need to fill this up to 25 milliliters uh, using the lines on here. So I'm going to take my sample water and fill it to 25 milliliters. I am right at the line. I want to make sure the bottom of the water of that uh, bubble is uh, the part you're measuring from. The first step we're going to do is add phenolphthalein, which is this green capped one in this case. If you bought just the chloride test kit, it would come with an orange kit, or excuse me, an orange cap. So one, two. If it turns colorless, we are good. We can skip the next step. If this was to be uh, pink, then we would want to add sulfuric acid, which I will show subsequently to this uh, specific test. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my chromate uh, indicator, which is this yellow colored fluid. I'm going to add five drops. One, two, three, four, five. So you'll notice that the sample is now yellow. What we're going to try to get this to, and it's very hard to depict, uh, but it's shown in this bottom right photo. It's going to be a brownish salmon color, kind of murky is what we're looking for it to change to. Uh, to get it to change, we are going to use a silver nitrate reagent, and we're going to Add dropwise and count as we go. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, it's a, a tinted brownish red color, uh, very murky. Uh, knowing that I had four drops, I'm going to take what I need to multiply that by, which was 10 ppm. So in this water sample, I know I have 40 ppm of chloride. All right, coming back to the same test that I said I was going to reperform with a sample that needed uh, the color change uh, piece to it in the beginning, the pink. I'm going to begin by refilling my sample tube back to 25 milliliters. Taking my phenolphthalein once again and adding two drops. It looks slightly pink. It might be hard to see on the camera. This one needs just about one drop of sulfuric acid. So the step is uh, for this is you're going to add your sulfuric acid end, nicely capped orange, and you're going to add dropwise until this turns clear. That is definitely clear. I hope you guys can see it on the camera. It's very faint pink. But we're just neutralizing the pH for this test, and we will continue. The next step again is to add that chromate indicator. You're going to add five drops again. One, two, three, four, five. We're back to that bright yellow color just as we were before without needing the sulfuric acid. And we're going to look for that brownish red tint again. That's kind of murky. Uh, counting drops again, same as last time, just with that added step for the acid. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're back to that murky brownish red. The reason this is a different value than the test uh, just a minute ago is this is a different well sample. 
This is well water versus our softened water supply here. So this sample had 70 ppm of chloride based on seven drops times 10 gives us 70 ppm. We're going to record that and with that this test is concluded.